Welcome back to the weekly review of February 25th, 2024, where we cover index future, bonds, and currencies. And let's get right into it. So, you can see that we have the E-mini S&P weekly chart. If you watched last week's video, I was talking about how we ran all-time highs, and you never want to go against the higher time frame bias. So, my bias was still bullish. This green candle is the week that just passed, and you can see that we had a bullish week. I said that if I wanted to see bearishness, we had to close below candle here. So if I put a line on it, let me change it real quick, the color. So like if we close below that orange line, that would be a change in the state of delivery, which basically means that we created a potential bullish or bearish order block. And then we can see some lower prices into this imbalance, this order block, and potentially this imbalance. However, we did not get that, obviously. And if we go down to the daily chart, I was talking about how we had this down close candle. And if we were going to be bullish, we had to not close below the midpoint of this candle. So if I measure that out with this FIB tool, the midpoint is this green line, 4988.25. And you can see this week we trade into it, but the bodies never closed below it. If the bodies had closed be below it, then we could have potentially saw that bearish scenario I was talking about on the weekly chart. But however, we didn't get that and we ended up being bullish. So another week, the bias was correct. You could have been long Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now, why would you have had to wait to Wednesday? Well, if we go to Forex Factory. So here I'm on ForexFactory.com. This is the website that I use to look for the economic calendar and to see what events are happening throughout the week. So you can see we had no news on Monday, no news on Tuesday, but then Wednesday we had FOMC, Thursday we had unemployment claims, and then no news on Friday. So if you're looking at this, you can get the idea that the move of the week probably won't occur until this FOMC event. So Monday, Tuesday is probably going to either be a consolidation or a manipulation move, meaning that it's going to trade in the opposite direction of what the weekly buy should be. So if we go back to the E-mini chart, so now looking at the daily chart, you can see this down close candle is Friday, and then we jump to Tuesday because Monday was a holiday. It was President's Day. So we go Friday, Tuesday, trading in the opposite direction of the range, then Wednesday being the FOMC. We have this large wick, which I'm going to get into on the lower time frame, but that was just manipulation. And then you can see Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, trading in the direction of the weekly bias so before i go down into the lower time frame to review this past week i basically have the same exact bias we would have to have some type of either shift in market structure or change in the state of delivery for me to even consider any intermediate term bearish prices to get below these lows into these imbalances and potentially these imbalances but until then you want to stay with the trend and just wait for price to confirm that it wants to go lower instead of trying to pick the top in this market. But let's drop down to a four hour chart. So looking at the four hour chart, let me make this a little bit more clear for you guys. So this red line is showing you last week and then this week. So anything to the right is this current week that just passed and anything to the left is from two weeks ago or a week and a half. So you can see we have, we open here. We have the manipulation. This candle right here is 2 o'clock. That's when the FOMC news event comes out. We drop down. Where are we dropping down into? This rejection block right here. We drop down into the rejection block. Notice how we get close to it. Don't, don't touch it here. So we're engineering liquidity. Having liquidity right here. People either have their stop losses here or they have sell stops so that when price goes below these lows, they're going to enter short thinking it's going to go lower. In both scenarios, you're a loser. So we go into the rejection block here, manipulation, and then we run for higher prices. Look at the aggressiveness that it runs. It doesn't give anyone an opportunity to get in. It just goes straight for these highs right here. That's when you know you're on the right side of the market when we have moves like this. So that was it for last week for E-mini S&P. Let's move over to bonds. So looking at bonds, I was talking about how we were coming off of this fair value gap 
and then we started to trade lower and we had this fair value gap that we were looking at. I was saying that potentially we could hit it earlier in the week and then maybe have some type of reaction to go higher because I was bullish on index futures. So I wanted to see bonds also show some bullishness. So I was looking for really Tuesday because Monday was a holiday or early pre FOMC to hit that and then maybe FOMC give us that run higher. So you can see that the low on this candle is 117.09. Look in the top left corner. So up here, when I hover over the candle, these numbers will change. So the low was 117.09, and the low on this candle is 117.11. So we come two ticks short of this fair value gap, which is okay. This gives me the idea that we might not be done being bearish on the bonds, and we might come into this fair value gap in the next coming weeks, which is not good or let me phrase it like this. It's not ideal for bullish prices on ind index futures. But just because bonds is showing bearishness, as we saw in these last couple weeks, and we saw index futures has still been bullish, they can still trade opposite. Now, when you have this non-symmetrical market, that's usually an indication that some very explosive moves are coming. So take that how you want to take it. But I do think we have some very explosive moves coming this spring, this summer, and this fall. But let's get back to the chart. So we have the fair value gap right here that price can possibly come into next week because we fell two ticks short. That is the same idea when I was talking about engineering liquidity when we were looking at the four hour chart on the E-mini S&P. And we have this low. So people are either gonna put their stop loss below these lows or they're gonna have sell stops so that when price goes below these lows, they are automatically going short. So price is going to want to go into that liquidity most likely, but we touch, we don't touch it. However, we still get the bounce that we wanted during FOMC and price starts to go higher. So if we go to the four hour chart, you can see that we had consolidation, which was that accumulation phase. We have this drop down right here, manipulation running out these lows. And then you can see we ended the week going higher, possibly looking to target these highs. And what I'm looking at is consequent encroachment of this wick how do we react when we touch that wick do we have a very strong reaction and we go down to take out this low and get into the fair value gap or do we just blow right through it looking to get into this fair value gap right here so let me mark it out right here the reason why i'm marking this out because it's a balanced price range we have the inversion fair value gap breaking this one and a fair value gap within that so we have the inversion fair value gap with a fair value gap, making that a balanced price range. So like I said, I'm looking to see how do we react at consequent encroachment. If we blow right through it, then we're possibly going for debt or we're definitely going for this balanced price range. However, if we have a strong reaction and some type of breakdown in market structure, then we're going for these lows. So I'm looking early in the week to see how we react once we get here. Now, let's say Monday, Tuesday just completely melts down and we go into this fair value gap. Then it's the same scenario, but flipped. How do we react once we get into this fair value gap? Do we have some type of break in structure? And now we're going to go up, possibly go through this and then go here. So basically, I'm looking to see what level gets touched first. What's the reaction? And then trade off of that. That's pretty much it for bonds. Let's move over to currencies. So looking at currencies, I was talking about how the dollar has been stuck in this consolidation for a while now, and it's been a very hard read on the dollar. We could have went bullish or bearish. I had no clear bias going into this week, and you can see we had a pretty lackluster week in dollar again. We didn't have anything to confirm whether we were going to go for this high or go for this low. Let me mark that out. So this low and this high, we're just been in this range this whole time. So there's still no clear bias. I'm still not sure what the dollar wants to do, which is why I've been very slow with trading currencies. If you are trading currencies, you have to be a scalper. Even being a full day trading, trying to hold for the daily range is hard because you might have a runner in London and then New York is a complete reversal of that move. And now half of your profits are taken out and vice versa. You can have a big runner in New York and then London closed can 
wipe out half of your profits because we've just been consolidating stuck in the range. So what am I looking at to confirm whether we are out the range or not is if we close below this up close candle. If we close below this up close candle, then I'm still soft bearish to go here. I'm still not strong bearish because of how the dollar has been trading. But if we do close below this gray line here, then I'm soft bearish. If, and looking at last week, you can see that we had this fair value gap right here and we didn't close through it. We had a nice reaction. We ended up closing above it. So does next week start to climb higher? What would tell me that is if we close above mean threshold of that candle. If we close above it, then we're probably going higher and then ideally close above mean threshold of that candle, then we're definitely going up into that fair value gap. But if we close above this on a daily basis, so on the daily chart, close above that, that green line, 104.626, then I'm looking for a run to here. And you have to know we're on the weekly chart, so that's a lot of range from here to here to be a day trader. So then now we close above there. Now the range I'm looking at is from there to there. Then if we close above there, then the range is from there to here. So you're just working within the ranges going from level to, to level as a day trader based off of these higher time frames. But let's move down to the daily chart real quick. So that weekly fair value gap, you have the daily fair value gap here. Like I said, nice reaction. If we close above this down close candle, then we're definitely going to get to the midpoint here. So we close above. Let me change the color. We close above that. Then we're going to reach for here. Then we want to see that reaction. Do we close through that? If we close through that, then we're going up here, which looks really nice because it lines up with a daily fair value gap. And then if we close through that, then we're definitely, or not definitely, but it's high probability that we're going to run for this low resistance liquidity run and we should do it in a pretty fast manner even though the dollar has been choppy but we are getting into march so hopefully that the ranges will start to loosen up and if we get through this resistance resistance area then we should accelerate through and go higher the way i'm seeing it right now like guns in my head if i had to pick an area of where it's likely going to go, like I said last week, is these highs. Why? Because I'm seeing it as a market maker model. What do I mean by that? We went from this high all the way down to this low and that high. So this curve right here, I'm looking at it as a market maker buy model. Now, let's get into market maker buy models a little bit. Let me delete all these lines. So when you have a market maker buy model, ICT teaches that you have your smart money reversal, which is like the low point. Then you have your low risk buy. Then you have your first stage of accumulation and potentially second stage. So the way I'm seeing it right now is smart money reversal, low risk buy, change the color. First stage accumulation, change the color. Now let's, use that. let's use red. And now potentially second stage accumulation. Change the color on that. So low risk, or my bad, smart money reversal, low risk buy, first stage accumulation, second stage accumulation. Why am I looking at it that way? Well, I'm happy you asked. If you look in this run here, what are the last lows that we ran out if you look to the left of the chart? So if I was to draw a line right here, if you look to the left of the chart, what are the last swing lows that we ran out? Well, we ran out this one here, right? That's the last swing low. Then the next swing low would be this one here, right? Because it's just above that one. And then moving forward, it would be this one here. And then so on and so forth, right? So let me delete it to go back to the first one. If you draw that out and you look at the last down close candles, this is called a reclaimed order block. The reclaimed order block. That is why I see this as the first stage accumulation. Because we're at the reclaimed order block, hit it. Boom. Now, what was the second one? The second low was this one, right? So if we draw that out, these down close candles, second stage, reclaimed order block. Boom. 
So that's why I'm seeing it as low risk buy. Oh, my bad. Smart money reversal, low risk buy, first stage, second stage. ICT also teaches that the second stage usually is fast. So that's why I was saying that we should see some rapid movement to it. And to put like the icing on the cake, we have a low risk or a low resistance liquidity run, meaning we have a high and then a lower high right next to it. So that's a low resistance liquidity run. Sorry, tongue twister a little bit. Now, if this high was higher than this high, then that would be a high resistance liquidity run. And I would look for it to chop its way all the way up there. But because this is lower than this, it's a low resistance liquidity run. So that second stage accumulation should be rapid and we should run for it fast. Now to add some math to it. So now we had the market structure of the market maker buy model. So now you want to see, does the math line up with the structure? And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So if we take from this high to this low, and I already have the preset right here. First stage with EQ, uh, EQ, which is equilibrium. Basically these red lines is 20 to 30% of the range from this high to this low. And the equilibrium is 50%. So you basically want to find the reclaimed order block or a breaker within the 20 to 30% range for your first stage accumulation. Now going back to that, is this reclaimed order block not within 20 to 30% of that range? Yes, it is. So now the math lines up with it. So this should be your first stage accumulation. Your second stage accumulation is going to be the very next breaker or reclaimed order block after the first stage. What is the very next one? Right here. Boom. So that's your second stage. Now, if your first stage accumulation happens, before we close above equilibrium, then there's a very high probability that you have a second stage accumulation. Does price close above this orange dotted line, which is equilibrium, before having the first stage? No. So because of that, it's high probability that we should have a second stage accumulation. Boom. Once you know it, this model hap or this fractal happens on every time frame from weekly all the way down to a one second chart. The same math happens, the same structure happens. The only variable is where is this smart money reversal gonna happen? You don't need to time it up, just wait for it to happen. And then measure from the high to low or low to high if it's reversed, find 20 to 30% of that range, find the reclaimed order block or a breaker. It's gonna be one or the other. It's not always gonna be the reclaimed order block that's used. Sometimes it's going to be a breaker but it's going to be one or the other. And then ideally you want to see some sort, some sort of imbalance form within those ranges. Do we have an imbalance here? Fair value gap, boom. Bodies don't close below it. So now I say all that to say this, we should ideally see rapid movement higher. However, that would go against the bias of index futures because ideally these should trade in opposite directions. The dollar has been chopping around for a long time, so it can continue to chop. It can ignore this and just be manipulated and be held in the range. So because of that, you want to still be a scalper and just scalp with that mindset in mind. If your model forms and it's supporting bullish prices on the smaller time frame, then you can risk a little bit more. But let's say your model forms and it's supporting bearish prices, then maybe you want to cut your risk in half or not take the trade at all, whatever your risk appetite is. But the bias is very soft, but it is bullish because of all this market structure. And I hope that market maker models became a little bit more clear for you guys. And the main takeaway is just first stage accumulation should happen within 20, 30% of the expected range, which is from high to low from where price stopped at to the smart money reversal, 20 to 30%. That is the main takeaway. Do not try to capture this. It's not necessary. Try to capture that first stage. And if you miss that first stage, whether it's a timing thing, whatever the case may be, or you're just not comfortable taking that and you see that it's not above equilibrium, then just wait for second stage. And that's it. I hope you guys found this video informative and insightful, and I'll see you guys for the next review next week.